Welcome to Roses and Thorns. I'm Kelly. And I'm Ryan. And we're going to recap The Bachelor. Week 7 of with Matt, Matt James. James. Yeah. yeah. What news do you have? Got a couple things. Okay. Um, do you have some stuff? I have things. Um, okay, so I think the maybe kind of biggish news um, is that Dale and Claire have been spotted together. Oh, I did see that actually. In Miami. I, did, I did not add it to my yeah, news. Like, Wait, in, in where? Uh, you say Miami? Or Florida. Somewhere in Florida. Okay. Um, Venice? I don't know. Somewhere in Florida. Venice is not in Florida. But... Is that okay? They said that it was something in Florida. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, I don't know. It's either in Venice, California, or is in Venice, Florida, if it exists. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there might... There can be more than one Venice, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, they've been spotted together. Cool. So, who knows what that means? I mean, they're holding hands. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I would like those two crazy kids to make it you know yeah i i don't i just i'm always happy for love i just want love to work you know do you think she was just coming on too strong <laughs> do, you, do i think she was coming on too I mean, strong like, continued like obviously she was like in it 100 percent, like right away but do you think he he even he as a like 33 or something year old no he is not 31 30. no he's, he's like 26 30? isn't he no he's in his 30s we're googling this okay he's 32 okay okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay you are right <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that just trust me <laughs> uh do you have anything is, oh, is that the only news? No, I got other stuff but okay. I can keep going um this is just like a tiny tidbit um Katie was voted in high school um, most likely to be in a reality TV show. Wow. <laughs> I mean, maybe she just talked. I mean, she. I think she was the one that's supposed to be the resident bachelor expert. It's either oh, her really? or Mari. Um, so if she had talked about reality shows and The Bachelor already, then like, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I so that was funny. All right. Your turn. Um. So, uh picture of demi has resurfaced of yes her wearing a, a yeezus jacket which is um something that uh kanye west's brand makes oh okay um but it doesn't make it any better just because it, it's a black owned business that um there is a confederate flag and they're on the on the on the jacket and that a white person is wearing it and, and the person okay. that's wearing it is Demi. Uh, in Demi's response to this picture resurfacing, she says that her um, boyfriend's dad gave it to her um, because they they thought it was cool. Like, it's a, like it's a Yeezus jacket or whatever. Uh, and so um, they thought it was fine. Mm-hmm. And so she... And she claims, despite growing up in Texas, in the South, that she didn't know what that flag was. That just seems hard to believe to me. Yeah, I don't know. I think people grew up with different definitions of it. It's like it's hard. I don't know what people really thought of it growing up. We can't. We're not excusing her. You can't. I'm, you can't. I'm okay. I know. I'm not excusing her, but at the because she should know by now. Not because that wasn't that picture was taken in 2020 sometime. She should have known. It was 2013. Not, that picture. That picture's from 2013. The picture was from 2013. Are you sure? That's I saw that that it was from 2013. I'm not making up that information. Somebody okay. said it was from 2013. Okay. Well, I saw that it was from 2020. Okay. Um. So I don't. If know. It was 2020. Then fuck her. There is no fucking excuse. There is no way. Mm-hmm. No way. And damn hell that she did not know what that meant in 2020. She shouldn't have. Yeah. It was. But regardless, it was racist. 2013. It's racist now. Well, did Kanye West even have like? a Yeezy's Yeezus like brand back then 2013 ask me one other fact about Kanye Kanye West because I know nothing who's he married to I know he's married to Kim (laughs) Kardashian obviously I was exaggerating sir (laughs) is he black I don't know I don't see color (laughs) I'm just kidding I'm just kidding I'm just kidding okay um anyway so on the Demi chair Mm mm-hmm she also used the N-word in a post. She has, yeah. 
Um, in a, well, so this one was specifically uh, in a response to someone call, like like this da 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 right like that thing you mm-hmm. know a um, hundred and sixty weeks ago, which uh-huh. was three years. Okay. Th- three years ago. Yeah. So we have learned things weren't racist in 2018, mm-hmm. if you didn't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't have that lens yet. We didn't have that one. We didn't know you couldn't say that word. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Demi apologized, but I just, I don't know if it's just there's been too many apologies lately that, like, it makes it harder to, like, care. Yeah. It's, like, too many. And this one little, like, I know it's not a little franchise. It's, like, one space. There's so many people. It's so much. And I just, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I, from what we have learned, um, nobody gets a pass, right? Like she did it. It was wrong whether she yeah, knew she, or not. She didn't even like. not okay. Expect. Uh, she wasn't. I mean, she's apologizing if she hurt anybody's feelings, but she's like. I have no one else to blame but myself Mm -hmm. for wearing that. She was saying she she said she was ignorant and whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, it's as good of an apology as you're going to get, honestly. Yeah. Well, mm, so she was not prepared at all. Right. She's like laying down in bed. Yeah. Like on a couch. Like like, like, looks like she just woke up, rolled over and gave this apology. Like put a little effort into it. I think also, like, I don't know. She is like, I'm horrible. I'm horrible. And it's like, when you say things like that, it makes the other person like, no, it's okay. Right? Like, when you can't, you can't turn it around about yourself in those moments. Like, you, like it's just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And if she had thought about what she wanted to say, like, put some effort into what she wanted to say, she could have avoided that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And again, she is young, so she hasn't, like, had as much practice communicating to, like, know that she shouldn't make it about herself. But it's also, I just, the lack of effort, like, immediately bothered me. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. It's not like you're apologizing to, like, your friend or something. Like, you're apologizing to an entire community of people. Mm-hmm. Like put a little effort into it. Yep, yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. Put some more effort into it, but <sighs> uh, another big piece of news. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the day after we did our accountability podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't think that w- it was connected to this at all. I don't think he listened to it. But Chris Harrison stepped down from being stepped, stepped a- aside. Mm-hmm. From being the host, mm-hmm. as far as I can tell, for one episode, pretty much, yeah. For I think after, after the, the final, final rose. rose, yeah. Uh, so who knows who's going to host that? Yeah, well, let's talk about it because there's he can't come back to the show at this point. If he comes back, it's like nothing happened. Uh huh. He can't come back to the show. He can go on and live his life and do other things. Yeah, he can he executive the produce show. the show. He Which can, is what he's going to be doing anyway. He's probably. not stepping he, away from that yeah, role. No, it's he's going to milk this as long as he can. And no matter what. I think like for people to take him off of like a executive producer role, I think it's more than just one person's call to yeah. do that. So I don't think he's stepping away. No, um, but I don't think he can come back as the host. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, yeah, there's talk about like who will come on for that episode and just in general, like mm-hmm. some people said Jojo because she filled in for that one episode, but I didn't feel like she did like a sparkling job. I mean, he, she did as much as, um, uh, as Chris Harrison does, honestly. I didn't feel like she had a natural charisma. I mean, it's her, it's her first time doing it. Sure, though. sure, sure. Yeah. But I was like, that's why it's not a natural charisma. Sure. Um, people said Rachel Lindsay. Mm. She... No, I just, I love her, but she has given too much to this franchise. Mm-hmm. They're, she, they're just, she also has says she's done with it after the her yeah. current contract with them is over. So yeah. That makes sense for her to not take up that, that role. And she has so many other projects she's doing, and this franchise has abused her. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not fair. Yeah, to, she probably has a lot more autonomy with the other projects that she yeah. has instead of being like um, 
probably constantly silenced and, you know, uh, discriminated, mm-hmm. honestly, against in the Spatula franchise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, people have said um, Garen from last season, Garen Flowers, I guess he has host experience or TV experience. Really? Yeah. And I don't know enough about him to have any thoughts about yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't hear him we didn't even hear him talk. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. She, he's cute. He's handsome. He was in um That's all I know. Uh Claire's. Yeah. Right. I okay. don't think he was still there when Tasha got there. I think it was just Claire's. Yeah, he was gone already. Yeah. Um and then other people are saying Wells. And Wells is probably not a good pick. Do you know why? Some, yeah. Okay. You re- did you read the Reddit thing? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to read from that Reddit thing. Um, here are some problems with Wells. Mm-hmm. He refused to acknowledge Black Lives Matter on his podcast during the protests this summer and then whined when called out on it because it, quote, doesn't fit the vibe of the podcast. He has not conde- He has not said anything to condemn nor even acknowledge what Chris Harrison did. He's made jokes about Cassie, the Cassie Colton situation where he stalked her Mm -hmm. um, and she had to get a restraining order against him. Mm -hmm. He said that Claire overreacted when she was aggressively kissed on on her season, triggering memories of a past abusive relationship, which I know like in that moment, like I didn't feel like he did aggressively kiss her. Like I like I didn't I felt like she stopped. Oh, he did aggressively kiss her. It wasn't that he, he he didn't pull away. She said he pulled away. He didn't pull away, but he did aggressively kiss her. The the white guy? Yeah. He grabbed her. He grabbed her he neck. Did grab, yeah, he did grab and her. And he, like, tried to kiss her, mm. but then she backed away, I'm pretty yeah. sure. And then, like, kind of... Because, like, yeah, she backed away, right? Yeah. She backed away, and he was like, oh, no, I missed my opportunity. Like, let me, mm-hmm. let me re-grab this yeah. opportunity. And, like, yeah. so... And, like, he was being a little bit too forceful. Yes. He was being too forceful. Yeah, I felt like the... Oh, I just moved my microphone. I felt like the first thing that happened, he did grab her a little bit. And then she, like, she blamed him for why the kiss didn't happen as, like, he backed away. But then when he came back, he did come back aggressively, like, kind of forcing Mm -hmm. her. Yeah, he absolutely did not back away. Which, and yeah, and that triggered her. So, like, regardless of, like, what he thinks happened or what, like... What actually even happened? Like, she was triggered by what happened. Yeah. So. And we can't. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last thing is, he continues to do a podcast. I didn't know this one at all. He continues to do a podcast with his host, Brandy Cyrus, who spreads QAnon adjacent conspiracy theories and is also touted high. Oh my gosh. Hydrochloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine and other <laughs> COVID misinformation and ex- complained about extremists being kicked off of social media as a violation of their freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. So I did not know this about Wells. I'm really thankful to have this information because I just thought he was like harmless white guy, whatever. But mm-hmm. fuck him. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Sarah Hyland could do better. Mm-hmm. And he's trying. Uh, okay. Well, never mind. He's pretty shitty. Yeah, that's there's no try there. Nothing I read could yeah, it, I say was, try. I was going to say that like he was just trying to stay out of things, but then he's like sharing like pretty shitty opinions. And I feel like there was a time in history where it was quote unquote okay to not it was probably the colorblind era when like it was quote unquote okay to not speak up mm-hmm. and just try to stay out of it. Yeah. But these days I just with social media, with videos going viral and seeing what's happening mm-hmm. to people, like seeing with your own eyes treatment that we previously did not witness, right? Like we didn't know that this was happening. Mm-hmm. If you didn't hang out with people from that community for them to tell you, mm-hmm. and if you didn't live in a community where you saw that, then you didn't know it was happening. Yeah. Now we know it's happening. Mm-hmm. So to be silent about it is to be complicit in it. Mm-hmm. Like, it is racist not to say anything right now. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. It was racist back then, too. But you could at least say, like, oh, I legitimately didn't know this was happening. Because, like, I did not see racism growing up. Because I lived in an entirely white community. There were different expectations (laughs) for white people. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad that these expectations are there. We need need this to be there. Mm Mm-hmm. For the good of everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, in a positive corner, 
Brian on his podcast with Mike Johnson. So Brian, um, Rachel Lindsay's husband Mm -hmm. on his podcast with Mike Johnson. Um, I just like grabbed this quote from it. So he's speaking up for Rachel and he says, you like, you know, when Chris Harrison's like, who are you, Rachel Lindsay? Who the hell are you? Yeah. Whatever. Brian says, I'll tell you who she is, Chris. She's Rachel motherfucking Lindsay. <laughs> and then he goes on, he says, a strong black woman. Um, I like, I put a dot, dot, dot. So there must be more in between. Mm-hmm. The best thing that's ever happened to this franchise. Mm-hmm. He is not wrong. Yeah. He is not wrong. Mm-hmm. There was more to it. There was more to that quote, but it was, it's nice to see a guy stand up for his wife, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, like, I mean, we'll, we'll get into it later, but when, um, uh, when Heather comes and then Mm. basically Matt stands up for his ladies. Yeah. For his ladies. And it's like, sorry about that. Yeah. And had to take care of that. And then like resume the night, Mm -hmm. um, as best as he could. Yeah. Addressed it, apologize and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They really like that about him. Yeah. Or like, or at least like that part. Okay. Did you have other news? Uh, no. Okay. I have, um, what is it? Accountability cushion? Is that what we said? Something like that? Mm, I don't know. Okay. It was, I guess I, I had it on the same cushion as Demi. It's not the same as Demi, but Serena C has been harassed online mm-hmm. so badly yeah so badly I'm people are being terrible to her and it's largely her looks mm-hmm. okay for her serena c it's largely anti-race anti-asian attitudes mm-hmm. like making fun of her eyes and like whatever like it's just it's awful mm-hmm. katie has not stepped in katie has not told them to stop doing that If Katie is the anti-bully hero that she was supposed to be on the season, she should be jumping in to tell people to stop harassing Serena C. Hmm. And I don't know. I feel like maybe Katie picks and chooses who she doesn't want to be bullied. Hmm. Well, why is it on Katie to do that? I mean, like, obviously, like, on the show, she was seeing that harassment. But, like, I don't because there was I think a lot of people who are harassing Serena are doing it as Katie stands. Mm. Okay. Right. Because like it's basically the bachelor made this narrative where either like you're on Katie's side or you're Serena's side. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then it's up to Katie then to at least control some of them. Mm -hmm. Like there's still going to be people who are trolling and being assholes no matter what. But at least she could get like a, a fraction of them out of there. Just be like, this isn't cool. You're a fucking asshole if you're harassing her. Right. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. That's okay. why I think it's. Like I wasn't Katie. seeing the connection to Katie. Oh, okay. Okay. That, yeah, that's why I think Katie is responsible to jump in a little bit. Yeah, I think so. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then separately, I'd how like, did you find oh, out about what? this? Just Serena C posting. Oh my god, no! Just people going to her Instagram and just screenshotting all the horrible things that people. Not all the horrible things. Several of the horrible things people are saying to her. Mm, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I also wanted to expand on something we said last week as a little bit of a correction, but mostly an expansion. Okay. So at the end of last week's episode or the accountability episode, Mm -hmm. we're like, and really, if you don't understand something, just like ask. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And I want to add to that as like a, a multi-step process that works for me. Okay. Not going to say it will work for everyone, but it's what works for me. Um, as a white person, who, especially a person who grew up in Midwestern rural America um, with, uh, I mean, just surrounded by white people, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot that I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And when I come across something that I don't understand, a lot of times my immediate reaction is to disagree with it because mm-hmm. it's not a thing that I understand or have experienced or have seen before. Yes, I know this about you. Hmm? <laughs> yes, I know this about you. <laughs> and not, not about race, though. But just in honestly. general. Yeah, in no, general. It is my immediate you, reaction. Usually I have to convince you when yeah. you don't believe something. The good news is, is true. I'm usually like, easily convinced. Maybe not in the moment. Like Dale Moss's like age that I like was pretty <laughs> sure about. And like you're like, no, let's Google it right now. 
Well, that's like a like a fact that's easy to Google. Sure. Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but when it comes to like race, like my, I immediately look through that white lens that I've always had, mm-hmm. right? The one that I grew up with, and I'm learning to see through differently. Mm-hmm. So, what I've learned to take as my immediate reaction after noticing that probably implicit bias or um, trying to disregard something as an experience that I just personally have not had Mm -hmm. um, is to stop and say nothing. And that way, once I learn, once I am better educated, I have not embarrassed myself by arguing about it. But I think a lot of times what I see online is that people like don't understand something and they immediately just disagree with it. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you want to be an ally, if you want to be anti anti racist, like if you want, and this doesn't even just have to apply to race, it can apply to disability or any other, you know, community that you are not a part of. If you don't understand, stop and then just listen and learn for a period of time. Like look and see what the conversation is that's happening. Look and see what dialogues are happening that you can understand not to be a part of, but to read through. The labor is already there. People are already putting in emotional labor. Mm -hmm. See what you can learn from it. If you can't find it from conversations, then Google it. Try to find out online. We have this wonderful tool. Try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. If you still don't understand, if you have a person in your life who you trust and seems to be like, you know, more woke than you, more politically correct than you, like it seems to be like on the up and up about this stuff, talk to them, Mm -hmm. right? A person who knows you and like will your curiosity will be well received with them. Yeah. If none of these things work, then I think the last step is then to ask a member of that community. But you have to be okay with them saying no. You have to be okay if they get angry at you Mm -hmm. and are like, why are you asking me to do this labor? Why are you commenting on this? You Mm -hmm. know, you should just know. You have, like, they might get mad and that has to be okay with you Mm -hmm. because you are asking a favor of them. Yeah, and it's hard to, as hard as a person of color to sometimes when you you are asked that and um, they're basically asking you because you are part of this group. Mm -hmm. And then you, and it's hard even, it's it's human when you, when you as a, a person of color, like, think that you're reduced to just your your race Mm -hmm. then it's like yeah so there is like a an emotional labor part where it's like i just don't want to do this right now and then also like it's also like almost a little insult it can be taken as an insult where it's just like is that all you see about me Mm -hmm. or um like like i am just this thing to you Mm -hmm. for you to learn or like a tool for you to learn and so like most of the time i'm fine with it I think maybe I don't I think maybe sometimes in school and maybe I was asked like twice in one week about my my race and it was just like I don't want to like, I probably just answered them but then mm-hmm. it was just like I didn't want to want to mm-hmm. talk to about it you know just yeah. because they saw my outward appearance and just asked about it mm-hmm. um and so like yeah it, it's hard um to continuously answer questions about your race um whether they're not like how what do you eat or what do you do what do, what do you what, what do you do for Chinese New Year it's like it's like the second time I talked to someone about this today already like I don't want to talk about this yeah yeah so yes it is be flexible mm-hmm. as possible because you don't know what they're going through probably yeah mm-hmm. and if they get upset you can't be like well I was just asking I was just trying to educate myself it's mm-hmm. like yeah educate yourself mm-hmm. right like. Do you, you can't get mad if they say no. Yeah. Yeah. And you also, you don't know how insulting the question you're asking might be also. Mm. Yeah. It's like, because you don't have the information. Okay. I just wanted to clarify on that because I felt like it might sound like we're like, yeah, if you have a question, just ask a black person. Mm. <laughs> that's like not, not what we want because that's not, that shouldn't be the first thing that you do. True. Okay. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Are you tired? Maybe a little bit. Hmm. Let's go. You still want to do a podcast? Let's do a podcast. Okay. We're, we're only like halfway through. <laughs> Are we halfway? <laughs> we're probably not even halfway through. So we pick up with Heather talking to Matt. Yeah. Uh, and then basically 
Piper is shooed out so that he can talk to Heather. Uh, and then Heather says, either in a talking head or something, she's like, I've been waiting all week to talk to him. And then like... Oh, all week, have you? Not I mean, six she, weeks like the other women? I mean, oh, yeah. poor She thing. also had a one-on-one this week, too. Um, but Heather, Oh, sorry. I thought you said Heather. You said Piper. Wait, what? Yeah. Who, who's been waiting all week to talk to him? Piper. I thought you said Heather. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was making fun of her. So I was like, oh, Heather, you've been waiting all week. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Piper. Yeah. No, Piper's legitimate. That's that's a legitimate yeah, grievance. Yeah. She, she was. Okay. She's been waiting all week. Okay. She did have the one-on-one with him this week as well. But yeah, she said that she was been waiting all week to talk to yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. No, that's legit. Or t- to talk to him about something specific. I don't know. It seemed like they were in the middle of a pretty a serious conversation. Yeah. Possibly. Or, I mean, at least in the middle of a conversation, mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Heather explains why she's there. Hannah said they'd be perfect together. Um, and so she's like, had to come out there and meet him immediately. Like six weeks into it. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, yeah, well, I'm looking for my wife, though. And she's like, yeah, I could be your wife. Yeah, you want to like you want to get engaged in four weeks? No problem. Next week is hometowns. Yeah, and she's like, "That's not a problem with me." <laughs> <laughs> it oh was gosh. ludicrous, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, Piper in the meantime is mm-hmm. just like really struggling. She's breaking down right. basically. She's crying, and um, she says, "I've never be- never felt so invisible." <laughs> um, we talked about it in our last episode, yeah. how Piper was having a really hard time with this, where um, her, oh gosh, how did I put it? It was an it was inse- like, insecurity. Yeah, basically her, yeah, a, a huge insecurity of hers was like realized. It like was just like a materialized in yeah. front of her, where this pretty white woman, blonde, blue eyes, walks in, and it like, and then like, her boyfriend uh, is looks happy about seeing her, mm-hmm. and then she is shooed away, so yeah. that sh- he can talk to her instead yeah. of you. Yeah. Um. And so like, we, I I said this already, but like you know, growing up, you see all these commercials of white women with long blonde hair uh, with all these commercials and makeup and all these other like um, all of society basically like commercial and so you you know like that's what you think is beautiful and then where it's like and Piper is beautiful beautiful herself yeah but she has a very big curly hair and she's black Mm -hmm. and you know like other things that like can I don't know. I'm sure she has a bunch of things. Like she she has brown eyes, you know. Yeah. Um. Like all those things, just growing up, and you know, this is just like thrown in her face. Yeah. 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 And so, so she had a hard time with it. That's why she was having such a hard time with it. Yeah. And so, like, I think the other women at this point are like kind of like consoling Piper because mm-hmm. I mean, she's just yeah. It's, they know it, the situation. It, it, like it like triggered her, mm-hmm. you yeah. know. And then uh, Heather comes out to talk to the women. Oh, so I'll, I'll oh, yeah. say that Piper is getting a lot of hate for this, too. Really? That, like, I mean, maybe later, like, we're about to get to that point, um, where Piper is kind of being a little aggressive towards, is being aggressive towards... Not aggressive. She's not being aggressive. She's being assertive. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's an important distinction. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. Um, she was asking questions and like very, very direct. Yes, and like telling how she feels and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, yeah. But where were you? So Heather walks in to talk to the other women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like asking her questions, which some are pretty like mundane questions, like "Who are you?" <laughs> I don't know if they actually ask that, but like, like in general. Mm-hmm. And then other ones are a little bit more direct less nice questions mm-hmm. yeah uh someone asks like oh were you on the bachelor before mm-hmm. uh and then she's like yeah i was on colton season like, oh so you're... then i forget who says it they basically just it... senya said you're bachelor hopping yeah there's a lot of people 
saying things, but they don't ever show who's saying it mm. a lot of the time. So, like, I think half of the lines, I just, I couldn't figure out who was yeah. saying it because they were just, it was like a group shot or it was behind Heather, so you just couldn't see anybody's faces. Yeah. Um, so it was annoying that I couldn't, we couldn't see who was saying exactly what. I don't feel that it mattered. Right. But I wanted to, like, so I had Michelle, Brian, Chelsea, and maybe um serena p not saying anything okay so like i think that was like a a a distinction to make at least because then like they weren't participating in like the attack on heather i don't know i i don't know how i would have seen this uh section segment before the things that happened last week Mm -hmm. But I feel like I am seeing it through a different lens now. Sure. And Heather is to blame. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And so then I think the women were... Okay, so you have a group of predominantly women of color. There Mm -hmm. are two white women that were in the, the existing group. And then a white woman comes in to their space six weeks into production Mm -hmm. and expects to be welcomed Mm -hmm. like she wants what you have yeah she wants what you've been working six weeks for Mm -hmm. and she wants to just come in there into your space and be welcomed and then still have a chance to marry matt james in four weeks like she like the the entitlement is honestly astounding Mm -hmm. it I don't think that a person of color would have been given the same opportunity. Mm -mm. And then, because there was somebody on our Twitter that was like, you know, I wonder if Heather would be getting this much hate if she were BIPOC. And it's like, well, she probably wouldn't have given this opportunity if she were a person of color. Mm -hmm. And if the roles were reversed and she was a person of color coming into a predominantly white space, she would be treated worse than this. Probably. The white people would have been very unkind to her. So, and you you can't ignore the d- dynamics here that there is a white woman coming into predominantly a space of predominantly colored uh, people of color, mm-hmm. and then it's like she just expects everything to be okay. She just wanted everything to be okay and everything to be normal, and I just it's mind blowing, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just. I felt like you were feeling bad for Heather and I'm having trouble well, feeling bad okay, for Heather. Well, okay, the only... Okay, so when they were actually finally saying, like, mean things to her, and then I think maybe the only... The meanest thing that uh, someone said was Kit saying, bitch, why are you even here? And it's just because she used the word bitch, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw it was more being sassy. Yeah. And it was a white person to another white person, right? It changes sure. the, the dynamics if there are different races involved sure but i think the intention behind it did seem like to hurt her feelings sure yeah Yeah. it was Mm -hmm. it was but again it's a person coming in six weeks i understand but it's trying to date your boyfriend i know (laughs) but it's just you know it was still mean to say sure it was mean I, I will give you that. I would say that <laughs> there are different ways to say, um, like, you shouldn't be here <laughs> uh, without, like, I don't know. I mean, it does being show... So mean, being so mean. It does show Kit's personality a little bit more because that was her... The thing that came out first, right? Like... The first thing that we saw from her, yeah. Yeah. Um, And then this is where Piper asserts herself. Mm-hmm. And tells Heather that she wants an apology Mm -hmm. because Heather walked in and didn't acknowledge Piper Mm -hmm. and just talked to Matt James like Piper wasn't there, basically, Mm -hmm. and then demanded the time with Matt James and Piper lost her time with him. Yeah. Um, So Heather does apologize. She's upset. She just, like, didn't expect them to treat her like that. Yeah. And she walks away. And honestly, um... I feel like aside from being surprised by the treatment, she handled it well enough because like she did just like walk away. Walked away, apologized profusely and um, acknowledged everybody's feelings. Yeah. Uh, Despite her not having, she shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully she realizes 
what she did wrong and why they treated her like that. Right. And hopefully, I really hope that this was all just a charade, charade, that they just like uh, fabricated this entire thing. That um, she came there, like they called her, hey, come here. Um, and then you, maybe you'll, you'll meet Matt James. Maybe he'll let you continue on this situation in this, oh, so you this mean, season. You mean like maybe this wasn't Heather's idea? Heather, regardless of what happened, Heather flew there on her own accord. Yeah. They did not invite a random ass woman to meet Matt James. Ooh, I don't know. You think they called her? And asked her, do you want to come and be on this season of The Bachelor? Very late in the season. And, like, I think they're both on the same page about it. I guess I can't put anything past these people right yeah, now. No. I think uh, ho- that's what I'm hoping is that sh- this was all kind of made up and, like, she wasn't even expecting to do this. Because I'm sure she's also, I'm sh- mostly, I'm she's probably just came on to get Instagram followers again because that was her initial goal on um, Col- Colton season two. Do you know if her followers went up? It did. 10,000. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sorry. Christians. It was before this episode. Um, so last week when she came, it got it went up like 10,000. Do you know anything about recent data? No. Um, Ryan made a computer program to track the Instagram followers mm-hmm. of the women because he's a nerd. <laughs> and he's learning coding. Yeah. Or practicing coding. I think you learned it. Now you're practicing it. Sure. Still learning? Learning. Is it a lifelong thing? Yeah, basically. Okay. You're like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so then Matt talks to Chris Harrison. Mm-hmm. And, oh, just like side note, there were a lot of people who were really struggling with Chris Harrison being on their screens this week after everything. Yeah. A lot of people down. who were like, if you just put your hand up and you cover <laughs> his face on the screen, it's a little bit better. Uh, that came from Crime and Roses. That's pretty funny. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, Matt tells Chris Harrison that he trusts Hannah B's judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what kind of makes this difficult is that Hannah B thinks that they'd be a good match, but it's like a weird part of the process for her to be joining in. Oh yeah, it's they should have done this like week three maybe if they wanted to add the drama and this to actually be a possibility. Yeah, and also Hannah Brown on her season she picked Jed at the end of it. She has the worst judgment. So yeah, maybe she yeah, she shouldn't. Maybe she shouldn't be the one she to also, be judging who is a good match for who. She kept Luke P for far too long. Way too long. He was probably far too long. He, he went to fucking fantasy suites, dude. Oh yeah, almost yeah. Yeah, he almost. Went to <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They did not forego their fantasy individual rooms. Then. Well, they suites. Yeah, week. They very much kept their individual rooms that night. <laughs> mm-hmm. They did not forego their individual rooms. <laughs> um. The women are very upset at this point. They just, like, are freaking out about it because they're like, what the fuck is going on? And mm-hmm. if he chooses her to stay, what mm-hmm. does that mean about our relationships? Yeah. Okay. I thought what Rachel had to say was really weird and, like, yeah, everything made sense. So she said, if he chooses her over me, that means that we're not meant to be together and everything he said to me was a lie. Well, um, I'm like, yes, that's Everything that you said in those chain of events, yes, that's true. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. It just seemed like she made up this scenario in yeah. her head and just, like, talked it out. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure yeah. it was probably all producer influence. Probably. It's just, like, the prompted questions. Is that what it's called? Guided questions? Sure. Okay. Um. So Matt talks to Heather. Mm-hmm. And he says, Hannah wouldn't send you here unless she thought we would work well together. But I don't see how it will work with us. Yes, I don't see how this could work. Um, For how far we are into this. Yeah, and she says, I just want you to know how serious uh, I am about this. Like, for what? For the past 20 minutes? Yeah. I mean, she quarantined for like, well, like three days or something. Yeah. <sighs> what a sacrifice. Um, I don't know. So then he sends her home. Yeah. He says, I'm falling in love with some of the other women already. My heart is pulling me into that room, which is where the room with all the other women are. Aww. Sends her sends her home. She could have just called and said, hey, Matt James, can I come? And right. he's like, I'm no. sure he's not going to sell a cell phone. Yeah. Um, 
And then a talking head, Matt says, I've said my wife is in this room and I stand by that. Mm -hmm. So, Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So the women are just relieved. Oh my gosh. They are so happy that this is the way he handled the situation. Mm -hmm. So she's not, he sent her home. And she had to drive herself home because that's how she got there. <laughs> she right? drove herself in a van there. So she was in a white van and she's wearing a white dress. And she's like, at least she's matching her van. <laughs> um, so he apologized to the woman and asks Piper to continue their conversation. Yeah. Which is nice. Oh my gosh. Very nice gesture. Yes. And it's like, it might seem small, but like so important. Yeah. I wonder how much. The producers were like, no, don't talk to Piper, you know, mm. to just draw on that, to continue on that drama where it's like, yeah, her time was cut off. Yeah. And like, that was it. And he was like, no, fuck you guys. I'm going to continue talking to her. I like, would definitely who- believe that someone told him not to talk to Piper. I would believe again. it. Because. But he has too much empathy. I mean, it does seem like that. Yeah. He has a lot of empathy and he is very actionable when he finds things out. Yeah. 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 Like yeah, when yeah. there are bullies. Yeah, he, has, he hasn't been messing around, honestly. Yeah, as long as he knows about it, he takes care of it. Yeah, and even like, I mean, we'll see it's, it's today it, yeah. in this episode where a woman like brings to his attention that like they like, I mean, like throughout the season, like women have been like, I'm feeling neglected or whatever. He's like, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And now it's like, I'm feeling neglected. He's like, actually, it's because I don't have feelings for you anymore. He's like, mm-hmm. he like realizes he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. That's what's going on. <laughs> Okay. okay, rose ceremony? Yeah. So safe going into the rose ceremony are Michelle and Piper. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, man, I was real surprised. I was not surprised that Serena C went home just because we haven't seen their connection. No, not at all. Um, we, I was, we didn't even see their kiss. No. Yeah. We've seen like barely any conversations between them. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that Jasenia stayed because we haven't seen their relationship. Yeah. We were only not surprised about that because of the previews. Yes. So. Um, and then Chelsea went home, which I did not see coming. Yeah. But who would who would you have sent home instead? Abigail. Maybe. Abigail or Jasenia, just based on We've like the relationship Chelsea. that he has with them. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought he had a stronger connection than he did with Jasenia or Abigail at this point mm-hmm. in the game. Yeah. Not game isn't like a literal thing, just like as the saying in the game. Sure. So who gets roses are uh Brie, Rachel, uh Serena P, uh now just Serena, um <laughs> Kit, Jasenia, and Abigail. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, next morning? The next day. At this point, Jasenia and Abigail are the only ones who have not had one-on-ones. And there are two one-on-one dates this week. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right? They Perfect. each get a one-on-one. Perfect. Everyone is happy. Perfect. Wrong. Ryan, you're such an idealist. You're stupid. Why didn't you know what happened? <laughs> a date card comes in. Um, yeah. Chris Harrison drops off a, a one-on-one date I honestly card. didn't even write him down. I just said the date they, card. They right. said, good morning, sunshine, to him. They did. It's like multiple people, right? Like in unison said, good morning, sunshine, to I him. I didn't hear multiple people. I heard oh. one person say it. but Okay. I heard them say it. Okay. Someone say it. Um, And it is for... Abigail? No. No. Jasenia? No. So... That means one of them are not <laughs> going to get a one-on-one date. Yep, and that means someone else is going to get two one-on-one dates. Serena. Yep. Gets a one-on-one date. And, and it I, says, like, go ahead. I want to go deeper with you or something. I don't know. I something was like that. so shocked at this injustice that I didn't listen for what the date card said. Yeah, it was my jaw, like, drop. I'm like, this is <laughs> fucked up. This is fucked up. Like, there are two people who need one-on-one dates. It's and so there are two up. one-on-one dates. The math is simple. <laughs> I feel like I, I was so angry. I was so angry. Yeah. Because they they absolutely... Okay, I think the the lead probably has some say in the dates. They have to. They have some say, but I think that they don't have total control. Yeah, I don't know what the process is. I can make up processes in my head for how I think it would work, even if you're wanting to stir up drama. You know, like, who are your bottom three people? Mm-hmm. Are the people that you are, like, the least sure of? Because those are people you're going to want time with 
because you have to like eliminate people. You have to like know if someone you want to bring to hometowns. So write down your bottom three people. Okay, well, Serena P's already had a date, so let's give her another one to stir up drama. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't. I don't know how the process works. I would really love to know the organization of The Bachelor. Um, I've seen um, postcard. What's it called? Those index cards on a wall. Uh, it it was from um, a source of mine. I won't say who. That just they had a picture of um, producers planning things, and it's just postcards on a wall. Hmm. No postcards. Index, index cards. cards. Yeah, that's all. So like other TV shows. Yeah, okay. basically. Just, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, she gets a one-on-one. Something about deeper. Mm-hmm. Let's go deeper. And Matt, ha- Matt in a talking head says that he's worked himself into the friend zone. And I thought that wasn't a good sign going to the state. No, when you hear that. I mean, I think on their date, they... She had mentioned, I can see myself falling in love with someone like you or something like that. Mm, mm, I didn't hear that. Like the first someone one. Someone like you. Or you. I don't know. Someone like you isn't the same as you. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Yeah, I, from that talking head, I was like, Serena's going home. Yeah. There was, was like I, multiple times in this date. I was like, Serena's going home. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we find out that they are going to do like a little yoga session. Uh, mm. Apparently it's ten. Mm? I was like yoga. This doesn't look like any yoga I've done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this yoga it involves a lot of tantric poses. It's tantric yoga. Um, and she is Serena P is so fucking flexible. So flexible and like strong. Yeah, because she's like holding herself up and like you know like planking basically. Do you remember her occupation? No. Me neither. I want it, though, because I don't know if that's what's created this body. But that's amazing. That strength and flexibility is incredible. She is, like, tiny, tiny, though. She is tiny, tiny. That doesn't mean you're strong, strong. But if you're tiny, tiny, you don't need as many muscles to seem strong, strong with that body. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Good point, point. Thank you. Thank you. So Matt goes into this, like, head first he's all in let's do it what's happening i'm in, i'm on board mm-hmm. and serena appears to be outwardly she is doing all the things yes if it weren't for her talking head and confessing to matt james i would have not known that she was not into this yeah i didn't really know until like much later she, yeah. she was uncomfortable um and she was like i went i'm glad that we did this <laughs> But we wouldn't do it again. He's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was so, it was very involved, very, um, I mean, honestly, sensual. It was. In certain and parts. I don't well, know a lot that of parts, honestly. Yeah. We've seen a date like this that has worked out. Because, like, the ones I'm thinking of immediately are Blake and Claire. Blake and Tasha. Was it Tasha? Yes. Okay, I believe you. Um... I remember Blake because he got a boner. That's yes. That's what I remember. Um, Kelly and Peter. Mm-hmm. So I think she got a rose from that date, but she ended up going home and like it was just a weird date. They both seemed to feel real weird about it. Who? Oh, Kelly uh, and Peter. Right. Yeah. Um, and then there were there have been more of these and I feel like it does not work out. Mm-hmm. Um, which is just something to consider if you think this is a good date idea. It it's might always not really be. weird. It's always really weird. Yeah. Like. Mm. Staring into each other's eyes like that seems great. And Matt enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But she did not. And I think that's what could happen. If she were the lead and this happened Mm -hmm. and she had that moment like staring in his eyes and was like uncomfortable. Right. You don't get a rose. You're done. You go home. Yeah. If your date is doesn't like align with your um, love language. Because, honestly, mm. her love language is probably not physical touch. It doesn't seem like it, and it definitely seems like his it's is. It's totally his. Mm-hmm. Um, can, like We've seen how he holds women. Yes. And it's he, like, very... Wa- holds them while he walks, like, behind them. Mm-hmm. And then also, whenever he's walking with anybody, uh, including uh, MJ and Victoria and Anna? 
um he always has their hand his hand on his weight on their waist mm. as he's walking with them and when they sit down his hand immediately goes to their knee like he's just he's always touching them so yeah physical touch is his love language for mm-hmm. sure yeah not hose it does not seem doesn't seem like that yeah um but yeah he says he liked the connection and the intimacy that it built mm-hmm. but he was receptive to her feelings he didn't try to invalidate them or anything right i thought they had a pretty good conversation Mm -hmm. about the whole experience yeah um uh but it did leave him with like some questions of whether or not that um they are on the same page yes about everything so yeah figure that out uh meanwhile at the house uh they got another date card the group date card um and on there it said piper michelle uh rachel brie kit and Abigail. abigail Um, and it said, love will always find a way. Yep. So this means Jasenia gets the one-on-one. Which that clue, love will always find a way, doesn't mean anything because there's no real date involved. It's just time together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Jasenia's excited. I think she, like, feels kind of guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I heard a little snippet of, uh, Piper being on the Bachelor Happy Hour. Okay. Um, and they had, she mentioned that um, the women had an agreement that, of course, they um, are all dating the same person, uh, but they don't ever want to share the details of mm. um, their interactions with him. Okay. And so I think that probably extends also to, you know, showing a lot of emotions of yeah. yours about him in front of all the other women. Mm-hmm. And so it's always really awkward. Like when Serena P got the date card for the one-on-one, she's like, I am happy about this. Yes. <laughs> but, but she wasn't allowed to be too happy. She about can't, it. Yeah. She wasn't allowed to yeah. be too happy because she was basically going to be shitting on either Jasenia or Abigail because yeah. they now know one of them won't get one and she gets one. Yes. Another one. Yes. Yeah. So back on the Serena date, they're at dinner, and Matt tells her he's happy she was honest with him mm-hmm. about the tantric yoga, mm-hmm. and she confesses that she's actually just a bad liar, so there's no way she could have lied to him. <laughs> and she also has this like interesting perspective that it's basically short-sighted to lie, because like if she had lied about it, then he's gonna think she likes tantric yoga, and then like what could that lead to? Mm-hmm. Right? Like that could just lead to more tantric yoga. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I never thought about lying being a short-sighted endeavor. <laughs> yeah, I've never thought about that either. Yeah. Um, he also mentioned that like I want you. He said to her, "I want you to be able to share. I want you to feel empowered." Or maybe he said that in the talking head. I don't know, but he mm-hmm. did say something about that. Um, so which is nice to like hear at least to about like. That's the kind of relationship he wants because it's, yeah, it's telling a little bit. Yeah. He doesn't want her to just like say what would make him happy, Mm -hmm. but he wants her to be honest and like feel like she can be herself with him. Yeah. He doesn't want a woman that will just do whatever he does. Yeah. And be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back of the house, we have Abigail. Mm Mm-hmm. And she's not sure what it means that she didn't get a date. She hasn't had any time with him. That's so sad. And I thought it sounded like she was going to self-eliminate. Yeah. So she really... So the honestly, for the past like three weeks, Abigail has just been like, I don't know where his head's at. Yeah. Yeah. I think she said that every single episode where she's just like, I don't know what to do because I keep not getting a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Barely get any time with him, but he keeps giving me a rose. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, and she's like, what if I didn't have the first impression rose? What does that mean? Like, yeah. At this point, it doesn't matter that she got the first impression rose because she hasn't talked to him since week one, which I know isn't entirely true. That's an exaggeration, but still. But pretty close. But pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. All date, group dates for her. Yeah. And then we cut back to the Serena date. And they're talking about meeting her family. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Abigail also mentioned that, how am I going to bring someone home when I haven't even had a date with him yet? Right. And that's when I was like, she's going to leave. She's going to send herself home. And you can't blame her because she doesn't know Matt James anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to bring home an entire like crew, camera crew and stuff like that. Yeah. After just like not even a group date. I mean, not even a one-on-one date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So then when they cut back to Serena on her date and they talked about meeting her family, this is the first time that I was like, maybe he is going to give her a rose. Cause it'd be kind of rude to be talking about her family and then be like, JK sending you home. Yeah. Right. But then but. I was still like, maybe he's just like trying to get a feel mm-hmm. for it. Like I still wasn't convinced he was going to give her a rose just based on like the energy from the morning part of the day. Mm-hmm. But she gets the first hometown rose. Yeah. She says like, uh, she wants him to meet his family. And then he says, I'm very looking forward to meeting. <laughs> so she said, um, I am falling in love with you. I think. Did she say that? I don't have that. Oh, okay. Maybe she didn't say that. Uh, but he said, I'm very much looking forward to meeting your family. Mm. So at least that. Yep. Yeah. And then they go ice skating. Yeah. And he's not good at it. <laughs> I don't think she is because she wasn't really ice skating. She was just standing there, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the group date? She's not even good oh. at it. She's not even good at it. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> oh, you mean from uh, Victoria, Victoria and Brie the first week? Yeah. Group date. Mm-hmm. There's no daytime activity. Straight to business. There was one. What? There was one, what? but they didn't air it. What? They showed pictures of someone blindfolded, folded, and then them in a hot tub. What? And that's all the pictures what? I saw. What was this activity? I don't know. Oh, the classic like, blindfold I, hot tub date. I don't know, <laughs> but his shirt was off. It was like one of those times. <laughs> I mean. He was. I guess he's in a hot tub. It makes sense. Um. Anyways, yeah. It just. Wait, was he blindfolded? And uh, someone, a woman, was blindfolded. And pinata? No. <laughs> no. Bikinis. Bikini. Blindfold. Hot tub. Sea World. <laughs> Dolphins jump. China. <laughs> okay. Um. So there was a daytime there was a activity. Date. I, I bet there always is. And I just, I think there wasn't enough drama for this fucking, like, director. No, they had editor. to get all the rose cer- the last rose ceremony and this rose ceremony to go into hometowns, like, ready. Mm, I guess. Because they couldn't show any, did you notice this? They couldn't show any hometown previews. Because it's such a diverse cast, it would give it away if we were seeing... Like, about like two white dads or three black dads or whatever. Like it would give it away. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Um, or an Asian dad, right? Like they couldn't show any previews. Of this is the first previews of hometowns we got. Was at the end of this episode. Yeah, at the end. Okay. Um. So Matt encourages tough conversations tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a dangerous thing to encourage. <laughs> yes. Uh, and there was one, the one like right off the bat was with, um, Brie. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it was, I don't know. It was pretty serious. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it sounded like it was going to be something really big. Cause she was like, I need to tell you something. I know. I didn't know this was going at all. Uh, and she says that she had to resign from her position mm-hmm. um, recently. I don't know how. Like a couple days ago, I think. Uh, because you can't go on vacation unless you have a really good vacation policy. Unless you're like uh, John Paul Jones. You got six weeks of vacation. You no, just John Paul used Jones, them all. John Paul Jones' company didn't have a um, vacation, policy. vacation policy. So he was just like, okay, I'll just... Take all the time off. Yeah, and then they had to, I think, make one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so she's now six weeks in. She's like, I can't. Like, I can't. I've used all my vacations. Yeah, so. it's, it's six weeks, but it's more like probably four, probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I was like, well, she better fucking get a rose. She better get a fucking rose, man. <laughs> I don't know what she has to gain from, like, if, unless she really thinks that it's going to work out with him. Um. Sure. Sure. She, she has to be in love with him, right? I don't know. Somebody said that, like, once you get in the final four, like, your opportunities after this really open up. Mm-hmm. Sure. So if she didn't love her job and she's looking for, like, sponsorship deals, this would be the way to go. Maybe. And then he talks to Piper. It sounded like she liked her job. Or she had a career. Yeah, it sounded like she had a career. Yeah. Can I confess? I always want to say Peeper. For what? Piper. But then I don't want to make fun of her name because I actually really like her name. Yeah. 
Uh, is it because is it the way that her name is spelled? No, I think it's I like to say words wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's all it is. Okay. So I keep wanting to call her Peeper, and I have to stop myself because I don't want to make fun of her name because mm-hmm. I, I really like her name. It's a good name. Yeah, I feel like there was a character on a TV show that I liked when I was a kid. Did Alex Mack or Charmed? I think there's a I didn't Piper and Charmed. Charmed. Okay, I don't know then. My so-called life. Do they have a Piper? I don't know. My so-called yeah. life. What was that? Uh, I think it was the first show that Jared Leto was in. It was like an old MTV show. Probably MTV. Maybe Nickelodeon. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. It was really serious and dramatic. Okay. I only... Okay. On Claire MTV. Danes was in it. <laughs> okay. I remember Beavis and Butthead. Uh-huh. Um, the... Was it... Not the Carson... The Daily... What The... The... TRL. TRL. Uh, Road Rules... Not Full House. <laughs> well, what's the what's the house version of Road Real Rules? World. Real World. <laughs> <laughs> full House. Not Full House. <sighs> uh, that's, that's all the shows I remember huh. on MTV. Okay. It's the only ones I really watched. Okay. Yeah. TRL. Oh, man. I submitted fan art to TRL. <laughs> did you really? Did. Of, of what? Their logo. They were like taking drawings for their logo. Oh. And I made a TRL that like could be like upside down. Mm-hmm. Like when you like flipped it, it was like the same upside down and right side up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, a Piper talks to him. And she says she's falling in love. Yeah. And I think this is the second time she said it to him and he hasn't said it back. Is that right? Am I right about that? Yeah. Do you, okay. I think so. I think she said it on her one on one and he didn't say it back. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he says back, but yeah, he didn't say it back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On her date, she says she's falling in love with him mm-hmm. and he does not say it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's not a great sign. No. I wonder what it is because it always seems like they have like fun and they right? have good conversations. Right? But maybe it just didn't feel right. Hmm. Um, next person I have is Abigail. Next person I have is Michelle, but I didn't have any part of their conversation. So I think it must have been like really predictable. Yeah. But I never, I, he talks to her, but I don't know what they said. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. A- Abigail. Abigail. Um, so at some point she starts saying, like, I started picturing the future. Mm-hmm. And I can see you in it. Mm-hmm. And then she asks him, can you see me in your future? Mm-hmm. And he basically says no. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says that it was great in the beginning. Um, you got the first impression rose. And then I started exploring other relationships here. He said he felt so strongly about her in the beginning mm-hmm. that he felt comfortable exploring other relationships. And that's what he did. And now those relationships are stronger. Oh, how did that happen? Yeah, right? Like, so basically, if she wouldn't have gotten the first impression, Rose, mm-hmm. then she they could have, have a stronger a relationship right now because he, then she would have gotten a one-on-one date. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ah, oh, it sucks. It just sucks because, like, Matt, there's no way Matt could have known how this was going to go. But it also just, like, sucks. Yeah, because they had obviously had like a spark yeah an immediate spark and they seem really cute together and like it would have been great to see that on a one-on-one mm-hmm. yeah she just shouldn't have gotten the first impression rose yeah i think that if the bachelor wants to show their commitment to different voices and to diversity then abigail should be the next bachelorette because she is both a racial minor- minority and a person with a disability. Mm. There are people saying that, like, oh, like, she, because she's half white, um, that she, she, she does look white mm-hmm. in some pictures. Mm-hmm. And they're saying that, like, just because she's Asian, like, that's just because she looks Asian doesn't mean she's, like, biracial or whatever. Oh, that's interesting. So Matt James's mom makes him white? And so it, so... That's interesting. People are just saying she looks kind of white. But then compared to the rest of her family, which are white, white, mm-hmm. white, bread, white people, mm-hmm. she's she's not. She's she's Asian. I, yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> that she was non-white until you mentioned it. And then I was like, 
oh yeah, she definitely looks Asian. Like I just I hadn't noticed till you said it. Mm-hmm. But it's also like, okay, so I'm reading, uh, or no, I was reading. I finished reading it. Um, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Mm-hmm. And she talks about the one drop rule, where if you have one drop of like black blood, mm-hmm. like you know, as a black person, yeah. then that makes you a black person. Yeah. And we don't, we have never applied that to any other race. And even now, despite how far we are past, like, the era where the one drop rule was applied, we still, apl- we still call people black when they are very light skinned, right? So, like, my cousin AJ, mm-hmm. we call, like, I identify him as black. He identifies himself as black. Mm-hmm. He is very light skinned. Yeah. His children are white passing. But if anyone be, yeah. finds out that they yeah, have a yeah. black dad, uh-huh. then they're going to be black. Yeah. Right? But, like, your niece your niece and nephew, mm-hmm. like, I feel like they could pass for white. Maybe my nephew. Yeah, because he has blonde hair. <laughs> he has light brown hair now. It's not blonde <laughs> anymore. My, my nephew was born with yeah. um, boy band. Uh, like frosted blonde, tips. Yeah, frosted tips. Yeah. It was so weird. But then if they find out that, they, that he has a Chinese mom, mm-hmm. then he is half Asian. Yeah. Right? He doesn't become Asian. He becomes half Asian. Mm-hmm. But Matt James isn't half black. We call him black, even yeah. though his mom is white, white. Yeah. Right? So uh, I, I don't know. Because we also like, we called Peter white. Peter's white. Peter's white. Peter's half Cuban. Mm-hmm. But no, he doesn't get to be Hispanic. He's white. And I just, I don't know. It's interesting it's, to think about yeah because it's yeah i just i i that's the thing i actually want to tell you the day when we're watching hell hunters or something that came out that <laughs> made, me want to think, made me want to tell you um but yeah it, it just it's, it's actually surprisingly fitting to this conversation and whatever we're watching on house hunters that like abigail doesn't get to be a different race because she has a white parent mm-hmm. but matt is black despite having a white parent like he does not even half black yeah um i was trying to talk about abigail uh because she looks half asian Mm -hmm. and that people are like well like what's this all about like she has like a super white family and like is she actually asian or whatever um like she doesn't even talk about her experience or whatever um it's well one one, she doesn't have to she doesn't have to but also like her dad is like left a long yeah. time ago yeah like like i mean i guess i mean she she i guess probably knew him actually or yeah maybe it sounds not. like she was a child when she got her cochlear implant but not a baby mm-hmm. so she probably did know him yeah uh so i don't know it seemed like some people were just really weird about her race mm. for some reason mm-hmm. and like wanted to disqualify her Asian-ness because she's in a white white family a really white family mm. i keep saying that <laughs> white 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 like guys you don't know how white her family is she's really white <laughs> but like what if she been adopted would that make her not asian like i mean that's what other people are trying to say too when she's already talked about her family experience her family like story a little bit yeah and then like uh, obviously she's not adopted she's yeah. still trying to figure out her yeah. story it was like she already said it yeah I don't know, but it's just like I don't I don't understand. I don't understand trying to disqualify her race. Like mm-hmm. okay. Anyway, so I think that she would be if they are wanting to show a commitment to diversity, then I think having her as an ex bachelor. She also she has a great reputation on the show. People liked her. Mm-hmm. Like she would not be a long shot for a choice by any means. Um, I don't expect that we'll have a black person as the next bachelorette because we just had a black bachelorette and a black bachelor, you know, can't get too carried away with that. Otherwise, it becomes a black show. Right. So I don't know. I feel like it could appease white audiences still because she is white passing. Sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because they do. I mean, I understand like as a TV show, like they're like they're not trying to be like racially diverse and woke they're not trying to be politically correct and like have like no you know, they're not trying to make a statement in any way they're, trying to, they're trying to make everyone happy <clears throat> trying to make money yeah and they're trying to make money and yeah, i they, feel like abigail could do that yeah sure yeah i don't know if people are ready for 
a a a lead that has a disability. I think they are because she's pretty. She's pretty and you can forget that she has a disability. And that's the perfect kind for regular America. And it like doesn't yeah, and it doesn't impact the show that much. Yeah. Like yeah. the bachelor would get to feel good about yay diversity, uh-huh. but then they're like Double white diversity. Republican audiences would also then feel good. She's like, you know what? I kind of like this disabled girl. She's half Asian too. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm-hmm. She's just like a regular person. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like a regular person. Uh, that was our impression of white Republican America. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, so he sends her home. Yeah. He says he I wish had more time. Um, but yeah, he doesn't. So he sends her home. Yeah. Yeah. And it just it sucks. It's mm-hmm. just like a shitty situation that's like was kind of in his control, but also he was trying to explore other relationships and get to know people. Mm-hmm. So Oh well. Yeah. All right, so Rachel. Abigail talking head uh-huh. um, in the car. Yeah. She feels like she's the one who helps guys realize what they want, but it's not her. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. It's sad. Which I also felt it was a good departure. If they want her to be the next Bachelorette, that's a good departure mm-hmm. where she's like sad, but not broken. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like they've set her up pretty well that she could be the next Bachelorette. Maybe. Okay, Rachel? Yeah. I didn't have anything about her. They talk about meeting her family. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, which I w- am interested to see. I will I am very interested <laughs> in seeing that too. Um, he says and this is real Oh man, this is important. He says he's thinking about her even when she's not around. This is the second time he has said that. Okay. That like doesn't matter who else is in the room, he's looking at her. When she's not around, he's thinking about her. Uh-huh. I just, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I mean, think it's pretty telling. I also feel like this could explain why Rachel was less inclined to speak out. Because if she is the winner, then that, like the Bachelor is going to be safeguarding her response so much more. Like they're going to be checking, double checking, triple checking her like statement. Mm, sure. Right, and so I feel like that's like. I feel like it's all very telling. I I think at mm-hmm. this point, I think Rachel's the one that wins. I think it comes down to Brie and Rachel. That'd be my guess. I would think so, too. Because yeah. Brie has, I mean, we'll find out pretty soon that Brie uh, is always the first person that he names at rose ceremonies. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Kit? Yes. Yeah, so then he talks to Kit. Um, a and fucking she, hilarious conversation. Yeah. <laughs> She's basically a child. Um, not basically. She's twenty one. She, she is, is a child. She's laying down the law right now, saying that I, I don't know how this lines up with your timeline, but I still need to finish school. I want to travel. I want to get my career going. I want to allow room for growth. Okay, so at this point, what age when she says like, I'm not going to have kids until this time then. What age were you thinking? Oh She's 21 years old. She wants to finish school. She wants to travel. She wants to figure out her career. She needs a cheerleader. Someone to support her through this journey. What age were you thinking? 27, 28. God, I was thinking like 30 at least. At least. Right? Like I'm thinking like nine years down the line. Because honestly, to finish school, to travel, to figure out your career, mm-hmm. you got to make some mistakes on your career first. Yeah, if you don't know what your career is yet, then like you have a long way to go. Right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so she she's a long-term investment because she's not going to want to have kids for another four to five years. Yeah, which is not that long to wait, yeah. honestly. Until she's 25 or 26. Mm-hmm. And then Kelly apologized to me is like i'm sorry i didn't tell you i was a long-term investment. i had no idea we have been together for almost six years at this point and i did not know that i was gonna make ryan wait this long if that's a long time i mean also the pandemic made us wait too it did we were supposed to be married last year and then popping out babies this year yeah probably <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh okay um yeah. so then rachel 
gets a group date right? yeah and so okay i thought okay i thought it was gonna be brie because he has to like she, let her know you did a good job quitting your job like where <laughs> you did a good you job, did a good quitting, job your quitting your job, job. <laughs> But then I saw what the surprise was, and I saw I figured out why you got Rachel. But he says, I have something planned for the rest of the night. And Piper, like, perks up, because that sounds like a plan for all y'all, right? Mm-hmm. But then he's like, Rachel and I are going to head out of here. So I'm like, wait, do the rest of them have plans? No, Oh, no, you and Rachel have plans. It took, like, way too long to figure it out. Yeah, do you think that they had this arranged because he was going to pick Rachel no matter what for this group date? I think that he chose Rachel for this because he knew the surprise was coming. Mm -hmm. And I think probably he did want to give the rose to Rachel no matter what. Mm -hmm. The rose to Rachel. Yeah, I said that right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he wanted to share this moment with Rachel. So whether he knew he was going to give the rose to Rachel all night or whether it was like once he found out the surprise, like he knew he wanted to share this with Rachel. Mm -hmm. There there was, he wasn't going to give it to anybody else. Yeah. Um, so it's Hello Black. Yeah. She's like the first person I've ever known to perform on this show, I think. Yeah. I wonder if it's like, because he's just dropped out of, um, like, obs- dropped into obscurity, where it's just like, he will take oh, anything yeah. right now. He hasn't had a hit in a while. He did perform at the casino here a few years ago. So I don't know how big his career actually got. I don't uh, He had at least like two hits on the radio. At least, I'm pretty That's sure. That's true. That's so, true. I don't know what kind of success you get from that, though. Well, because his other one, though, not everyone, I think, knew his name because it said Avicii. Mm. Right? Because Avicii was the, the DJ that put it together. Mm. He did have another one. And I can't remember what it is. That was big. Mm-hmm. And then the one that I really like that's always like on my workout playlist is um, The Man. It's a yeah, good man, workout song. The Man, The Man, The Man. Yeah. It's a good song for working out. Okay. Motivation song. Uh, You can tell everybody. That's the lyric in the song. It's fine. Um, So then Matt and Rachel are making out. Yeah. That's so weird. It's so awkward. Uh, And I will point out one of the lyrics. um, Not just one of the lyrics. It's a very repetitive lyric in the song is I do. 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 Mm. Yeah. foreshadowing yeah wait basically. what's the good one way to say foreshadowing for sunshining because <laughs> foreshadowing is bad right i don't know is it foreboding is bad yeah ominous is bad uh-huh foreshadowing is neutral maybe okay so then kit goes to talk to matt james mm-hmm yeah. And she tells him that she never thought she could let her guard down this much. Mm-hmm. It was like after, like he's not with Rachel anymore. Yeah, she's he's like, at okay, he's, he's back at his place and then Kit comes over. Yeah. Um she didn't think she could let this her guard down this much, but she's still figuring out her feelings and hometowns isn't where you figure it out. That's smart. It was very mature, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like I was into Kit at this moment cuz like uh-huh. I I mean for the most part, I found her personality underwhelming most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was into this. Like, this was very mature. It was a great decision to make. So she's like, to go ahead and just, like, self-eliminate because she didn't know where her heart was at because it is a two-way street. Yeah. And we wouldn't want your parents to travel down there for no reason. Right. Well, they're already there quarantining, so. Oh, probably. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All of them? Yeah. Honestly, I think so. That's fucked up. I know. Maybe maybe they get like a vacation. Maybe. You stay at Nima Colon and just use the spa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she sends herself home. Yeah. And then it is the just Was there like a talking head date. with her? No, she was in the car. I feel like she didn't say anything too notable, but it was like respectable. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Just send you. Just yeah, just send you. So she gets picked up. And you pointed out that she said hi to the driver. She greets the driver. That's nice. She said hi. She might have said thank you for opening the door. Mm, okay. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk to the driver, the chauffeur person before. Hmm. And I just thought that was really classy. That's, I mean, it's just like nice. a kind, a kindness. 
We don't see a lot of that in the world. <laughs> no, we do. We do see a lot of kindness in the world. If you look for we it, we are that kindness. Huh? We are that kindness. We are. Yeah. Aww. So she gets dropped off in a big parking lot, <laughs> <laughs> which is so random. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's like a bunch of stuff around, but it's just like, oh, here. Yeah. Like, I mean, if so, they're like, okay, get out. Okay. There's so much trust that a contestant has to put into the show. Yeah, probably. Because, like, my instinct would be no. No. <laughs> show me what I'm getting out of the car for, and then I'll get out. Yeah, where do but, you like, think... don't just drop me off in this parking lot. Where do you think that parking lot was? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it was at Nemo Colon? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Probably, right? Maybe. It has to be. It has to be, like, I can't imagine another place near there that would have that big of a parking lot and not a car in it yeah they could like control not having a car in it yeah and then also okay with them fucking it up yes with all of those like tire marks yes yeah so then there's a sports car and mount james Mm -hmm. get out Uh and it's tony angelo sure a professional driver yeah and then he's like let's drive and Jasenia starts driving and Matt looks fucking scared <laughs> yeah, his face was it was same faces that he, he had when he was pranking Tyler yeah just like out of <gasps> shock or you know those crazy Excitement. faces like I'm glad that we at least get to see some of his reactions yes. his actual face like when he's doing this stuff yeah um but looking like Jasenia was having fun mm-hmm. he looks scared but I think he was having fun and then he drives, and they, like, let him, like, run into stuff. Yeah. And he fucks up the car. Yeah, he fucks up the car. He, like, broke all the side view mirrors. Or, yeah, side view mirrors. And um, I'm sure the front got, of the car. I don't know what that was. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it got scratched up a lot. Yeah. And then Jenny, uh, Jasenia asks if they can dry something, so he picks her up, and they make out on the hood of the car. Yeah. And he, like, he picked her up as if she were a toddler. Yeah. Like, I mean, no effort. No effort. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was like watching Colton jump the fence. Like that kind of like satisfying, just like so smooth. Yeah. It was just so smooth, like lift up, set down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I am amazed by strength. <laughs> I have none. <laughs> like when I, when I picked up those weights and you're like, oh. Oh, baby. You're like, I didn't know you could lift that up. You moved my art cabinet all by yourself today. Yeah, baby. I tried to use the dolly and then like, because it, then it tilted <laughs> and everything <laughs> fell over. Like, oh, fuck. So I put it back down and I was like, I just picked this up. I just picked it up. <laughs> and, then, and then I just moved it in. I, I didn't need to do that. So I fucked up all your art supplies. <laughs> on it. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> And they have their night date. Yes. And it's romantic, but very bright. Sure. Right? It was very bright. It was in a white room with a lot of lights. I guess. I didn't notice that. I just, I saw the initial turning on of them. I was like, oh, that's cute. Did you notice that Jasenia was dressed up super cute and Matt was wearing a hoodie? I saw that he was wearing a hoodie. I, wasn't she just wearing a sweater? She No, she was wearing like a tiny, tiny dress. Oh. It was like a tiny pink, like very tight dress. Oh, I didn't see it then. Like, yeah, right below her butt cheeks kind of dress. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is a very normal real world date where the woman spends two hours getting ready and the guy throws on a hoodie. But I've never done that. I don't know. <laughs> No, you put on a sweater. You do. At you put least, on a sweater and you gel your hair. At least yep. a sweater. <laughs> okay. Um, so he asks how his parents or his family would like react to him. Mm-hmm. He says that they're probably excited to meet him and then we'll welcome him with open arms. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she says she's falling in love with him. Mm-hmm. And he picks up the rose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And says a lot of really nice things to her. Yeah. He says, I'm not there yet. Um, well, he says, like, how wonderful she is and what a great time they've had. But I'm not there yet. Yeah. I can't give you that love. I put, I wrote a typo. I don't know what it was. Okay. But yeah, I, I didn't write down exactly what I can't he give said. you that love or something like that. Yeah. And then walks her out. So then Jacenda goes home. Mm-hmm. She's a little bit blindsided. 
But we didn't see their relationship, so I don't know what was there. No. I mean, they seemed kind of cute, but... And maybe something was happening, but it was way too late. Yeah. Rose ceremony? Yeah. I, um. So oh. when the person came to pick up her luggage, um, while all, all the other women were just, like, sitting on the couch... I don't know if they're, like, actually shocked or... Because then they always cover their mouth. And mm. um, I don't know if they're ever, like, actually happy that they got sent home or if they're, like... Because, you know, if you're smiling, you don't want to mm. look like you're smiling. You cover your mouth. Mm. People don't know that you're smiling. That's smart. But their eyes are saying that they're smiling, though. Mm. Honestly, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Seems like. Okay. Hmm. So going to the rose ceremony, Rachel and Serena are safe. Yes. And then, uh, um, since two women have self-eliminated, basically, and mm-hmm. then just sending us at home, that just means one person's not going to get a rose. Yes. Um, so the first person is Brie. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, she ha- gets She's the f- first. first rose every single time uh-huh. at the rose ceremony. Um, and Michelle. Michelle gets the rose. Which means Piper's going home. Mm-hmm. Which is super sad yeah she seems very hurt she Mm -hmm. doesn't hug him Mm -hmm. she just he walks her out and then she just gets in the car and she's i mean she's just done i think she's probably emotionally exhausted yeah she said this is a this was a perfect waste of time (laughs) 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 Uh, i will go back to the last rose ceremony in this episode because i forgot to say something so when serena c was walking out she was she said her goodbyes right Mm-hmm. And then when she walked up to uh, Matt James, she was she was like cheesing like crazy. She was actually happy. Like it looks like she was uh, happy that she's about to go home. Mm. And she's like, it's like he said something like, "Thank you for coming by." She's like, "Of course." And then she like just like says goodbye. Like she just got eliminated from um, some talk show or something mm. oh no she's like saying goodbye to a talk or saying hi to a talk show when she's walking out on stage like oh bye hi like she didn't give a fuck about this process i don't know i uh, people process their emotions differently and she seems like a person who's especially guarded so i don't know probably yeah it i just, think it, she it thinks she's like a, real tough i think she tries to be tough seem like a really weird exit yeah that's fair that's fair. Yeah. Uh, and then we get like a little, like, um, what's that called? Like a tag at the end where mm-hmm. we find out that Rachel, or not, Mich- Michelle, but Michelle, sorry, I was looking at the I name was Rachel. Say Brittany. I was looking at the name <laughs> Rachel. Uh-huh. Uh, Michelle is really funny. Mm-hmm. And there's like a thing where she, like, it's like, before I give my toast, I just want to make sure I look good on camera. I'm going to do some push ups real quick. <laughs> I mean, she's got some good arms. Too. Oh my gosh, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah, she did another funny thing too before that, but that was definitely the funniest part. Yeah, I, I only had space to write down one of them, so mm. I chose which one to write down. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that the episode? That's the episode. So next week is hometowns. Uh, we'll see. Um, it seems like they travel to their place. Unless they get like a like a home or something in Nemecolon, it seems like they're walking into homes, not just like hotel rooms. I thought it looked like they were all walking into the same space. Really? Yeah, I think it's just like a big living room type situation in Nemecolon. I thought I thought it all looked like the exact same room, and so I was like, they can't even give them like separate areas. I don't know. Okay, maybe we. Yeah, can. I think maybe it was the saw. same space. All right, we'll see. You're not going to plug our podcast while I look up this. Is- uh, I can. And Twitter. And so uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Roses and the Thorns Pod. Um, Kelly tweets things throughout the week and live tweets the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I post memes whenever <laughs> creativity hits me. I, I try to share news too, but I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. I don't know how I want to format that yet. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was slacking these last few days, migraine. Oh, slacking. I was like, slacking your slacking. Your school uses slack now? Slacking. Okay. No, like slacking off. Um I had a migraine and my eyes were like super sensitive. So I did not 
do what I normally would have done on Monday and like try to find all the news and like there's like so many interviews with Rachel Lindsay and mm-hmm. like all like all the stuff going on right now and yeah I mean like mm-hmm. I've basically had a migraine since Friday <laughs> so off and on since Friday mm-hmm. um, so I haven't been on social media as much recently yeah there's a lot of stuff going on and it's just hard to keep with all he hard to keep up with all of it regardless mm-hmm. of whether or not we have a migraine or not yeah yeah plus trying to like consume other material that's not bachelor related <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so a special shout out to our canadian listeners mm-hmm. you're still definitely in our top downloads ontario is leading the way um we also have some from alberta manitoba and unknown mm-hmm. I... I think i said manitoba manitoba uh-huh. um my that B whiskey drink was a little bit strong to oh, me. Okay. <laughs> um, I put three shots in it. Oh, okay. It was delicious, so I stand uh-huh. by it. Uh huh. Um, it was three shots of our new bourbon uh-huh. from Middle West Spirits, not a sponsor. Um, and then, um, 0.75 ounces of the. Woodenville Woodenville maple, maple syrup. syrup. And then a little bit of chocolate bitters. Okay. It's real good. Anyway, in the US, top five states. Washington, Idaho, California, Virginia, and Georgia. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hello. 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 If your name is not being mentioned, please tell your friends about this podcast. Mm-hmm. And then you can get in our top downloads. Yeah. Also also just like tweet at us or something talk to us yeah you can follow us you can also interact with us Mm -hmm. um like i don't know it's fun it's fun to talk to people it's fun to find out like who's listening to this like we see the numbers we don't know who you are so talk to us let you let us know what you like let us know what you don't like let us know if we're getting something wrong like we are receptive to feedback Mm -hmm. so please thank you for your feedback thank you for your (laughs) feedback (laughs) All right. And uh, as always, rate, review, and subscribe. That's how more people find us. Mm -hmm. So you should touch all of your favorite podcasts. Um, But right now, start with this one. (laughs) Yeah. Please. Do it now. Do it now. (laughs) Do it. Do it. Do it now. Okay. Okay. Bye. I love you. Bye.